Yeah, so what I want to, I, I want to talk about, um, I know there's this talk about food safety a lot today, and so um, where I'm involved in is in the composting world, the regulatory oversight of it. And so we want to make sure that compost is, uh, is produced in a way that protects public health, safety, and the environment. So what I'm going to talk about today um, is basically that. So um, we have um, state minimum standards for the um, uh, operation and design of composting operations and facilities. And again, we want to make sure that these facilities and operations are managed in a way that protect public health, safety, and environment. Basically be good neighbors. And then kind of as a subset of that, uh, we have environmental health standards for compost, what goes out the door. So I'm going to be talking about both of those issues. So it, the Cal Recycles uh, regulatory oversight of uh, the composting industry, basically it's a, a, a tiered approach. Um, we have all these different tiers, and basically it's based on two criteria, the type of feedstock the facility is handling and the volume. So as an example, if, you're, if a facility is handling agricultural material, we feel that that doesn't need as much regulatory oversight as, which would be on the left-hand side, say like in the excluded or the enforcement agency notification tier, as opposed to if a facility is handling food waste or biosolids. We think that's much more of a problematic feedstock, so there should be a greater regulatory oversight. Same holds true on the volume issue. Right here, you see here green material composting operations, and it's less than 12,500 cubic yards of material on site at any one time. It would be in this lower tier, but then if it's over 12,500 cubic yards, it would be in the full solid waste facilities tier. The importance of that is in the lower tiers, there's less inspection frequency as you move up to the, sol the full solid waste facility permit. It's monthly inspection where the enforcement agency is up to quarterly inspection. So that's what we, that's basically the regulatory approach. Um, and then we also have state minimum standards for the operation of the facilities. Again, we want these facilities to be good neighbors. At the top, I put odors. That's really the issue with compost facilities is especially when you're dealing with food waste, it can be very odorous, so we want to make sure that they're handled in a way that, again, being good neighbors, vectors, litter, litter hazards, nuisances, whatever. So again, this is on the facility side of things. But I think what sounds like we're more interested in today is on, in food safety, and so really we're more interested in, okay, is the material compost that's produced at these facilities that are hopefully good neighbors, is the material safe? And so we have some standards here, sampling, testing, and uh, verification. So I'll go briefly into all those aspects of it. Basically, all operators, if you're going to be selling compost at one of these facilities, it has to meet maximum metal concentrations, pathogen reduction, and physical contaminants. And so in order to do that, First of all, we want to sample the material. So what the operator has to do, has to do is every 5,000 cubic yards of material that's produced, take a sample, send it to the lab, and then the lab will test for pathogens, metals, and now recently physical contaminants. Now, if it's a low volume of facility and they don't produce 5,000 cubic yards in a year, then at least one time in a 12-month period, they'd have to take a sample, send it to the lab, and have those uh, the labs test for those materials, and then once those test results come back, and they hopefully come back fine, then the materials, according to the regulations, are allowed to leave the site. So what do the, what do the labs test for? Maximum metal concentrations. Here are the nine metals. These are based on the U.S. EPA 503 regulations for biosolids. We adopted those in the 90s. So have to make sure that they meet these metal concentrations, not exceed them and also pathogen reduction. These, kind of as Paul touched on earlier, indicator species, that's what fecal coliform and salmonella, as long as they stay below these ranges, then they pass the pathogen reduction test. And there's a couple ways for windrows, and that's really been the traditional method for compost facilities in the past. Our regulations require that 
the material has to reach 131 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 15 consecutive days with a minimum of five turns, and that will help ensure that they meet the pathogen reduction limits that I just showed on the previous slide for fecal coliform and uh, salmonella. We're seeing more and more movement in the compost industry for aerated static piles. Again, Paul touched on that earlier about VOCs, volatile organic compounds. Every time you turn that window, especially in the early stages, release VOCs, and so air districts are clamping down. And so we're seeing a lot more movement on aerated static piles, and so the regulations require that, again, they have to reach 131 degrees Fahrenheit, 55 degrees Celsius, and then maintain those temperatures for three days. And usually they have some sort of an insulating blanket. You see here like these tarps, but a lot of times it's often finished compost. Again, this is for PFRP, process for further reduction of pathogens. Again, those regulations are designed then to meet those standards for fecal coliform and salmonella. Um, it's really interesting. I'm glad uh, Paul mentioned this about SB 1383. This just came up in the last couple of years. As more organic material is mandated to be diverted from landfills to reduce methane generation, a lot of that material that's going to be pulled out of the landfill is food waste. And food waste oftentimes is highly contaminated with packaging, glass, metal, plastic, what have you. And so we felt it was very important that we establish a standard, a minimum standard for physical contaminants. And this became effective on uh, January 1st of 2018. And the regulations require now that any material that leaves the site has to have no more than 0.5% physical contaminants by dry weight and no more than 0.1% film plastic by dry weight. So these are the basic standards that we have. I made this real brief. And then we also have a verification stage here. Um, we have the local enforcement agencies that come out. I want to introduce um, someone here, Robert McClellan. Robert, why don't you raise your hand? I asked Robert to come here. Um, Robert's been in the business uh, a long time. And I thought Robert would be great to have here as well because he's also an almond grower. So he understands the nexus about food safety here. And so basically the local enforcement agencies or sometimes cow recycle, not every um, jurisdiction has a local enforcement agency. So cow recycle sometimes acts as the enforcement agency for a handful of cities and counties. And so they go out and they basically, to ensure that this compost leaving the site meets those standards. They'll check the records, the operator's records, to make sure that they have the test results back for both the metal concentrations, the pathogen reduction, and the physical contaminants. And also look at the temperature logs to make sure that they were hitting the 131 degrees Fahrenheit for the PFRP, pathogen reduction process. And they can also go out there, they have the discretion, take temperature readings for themselves, Let's say there, there's a pile of material that's going to go out, and the, the operator's saying my records indicate that it meets those physical contaminant standards. Well, if the, if the LDA feels that the material might be a little bit dirty, let's take a sample. Let's send it to the lab to make sure that it meets those standards. We're also working with industry. This is for compost. For chip and grime material, that coarser material, we're working on the standard we're working on a methodology to measure physical contaminants at the site. So in a nutshell, that's basically how we're trying to protect public health and safety through our regulations. Minimum standards to make sure that the compost facilities and operations are managed in a way that protects public health, safety, and the environment. Again, like I said, good neighbor. And at the same time, the material that leaves the facility is safe. So we have sampling, testing requirements, and then verification via the LAA or cow recycle. So with that, I know we're going to hold off on questions. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you.